Good day, everyone. I will be discussing the ABO blood group system. So I do not own these slides. Credits to Ms. Phil for letting me borrow these PowerPoint slides on this lecture. So these are the objectives for our discussion today. The ABO blood group system is the most important of all blood groups in transfusion practice. It is the only blood group system in which individuals have antibodies in their serum to antigens that are absent from their RBCs. Now, this occurs without any exposure to RBCs through transfusion or pregnancy. And due to the presence of these antibodies, transfusion of an incompatible ABL type may result in immediate lysis of donor red blood cells producing very severe, if not fatal, transfusion reaction in the patient. So in other words, when we talk about ABO blood group system, you have on your red blood cell membrane the specific ABO antigens. Now, if you have that specific ABO antigen, in the serum, on the other hand, you should not have any antibodies that are specific to that antigen attached to the red cell membrane. For example, if you are an A group no, individual or if you have a blood type of A positive, that would actually mean that you have an A antigen from the ABO blood group system attached to your red blood cell membrane. So if you have an A antigen attached to your red cell membrane, the antibodies found in your serum should not contain any antibodies specific to, an, to the antigen A, meaning you don't have any antibodies against to these antigens on the red cell membrane. So the antibodies found in patients or individuals with an A antigen should be anti-B, absence of anti-A antibody. So I hope you're getting my point. So remember, Testing to detect ABO incompatibility between a donor and potential transfusion recipient is the foundation on which all the other pre-transfusion testing is based. Even today, transfusion of the wrong ABO blood group remains the leading cause of death in hemolytic transfusion reaction fatalities reported to FDA. Now, it was actually Carl Landsteiner who truly opened the doors of blood banking with his discovery of the first human blood group system, the ABO blood group system. Discovery of such blood group system marked the beginning of the concept of individual uniqueness defined by the RBC antigens present on the RBC membrane. In 1901, Landsteiner drew blood from himself and five associates separated the cells and the serum and then mixed each cell sample with each serum. He was inadvertently the first individual to perform forward and reverse grouping. And with his discovery, he was awarded a Nobel Prize for Medicine. So other contributors were Castrello, Sterling, Bernstein, and Thompson. So ABO forward and reverse grouping tests are required to be performed on all donors and patients. ABO grouping is the most frequently performed test in the blood bank department. So forward and reverse typing have actually a reciprocal relationship between them. Thus, one serves to check the other. How come one serves to check the other? So in forward grouping, we use in known sources of commercially prepared sera, anti-A and anti-B, to detect antigens in an individual's red blood cells. Remember, your antigens, your, the ABO antigens that you have inherited, okay, or the antigens are basically found in the membrane of your red blood cells. 
So, may either be A, if you have blood group A, type A, or B, if you are type B, or none at all, if you are type O, individual, or both A and B, if you are an AB, individual. Now, the purpose of doing your forward grouping or forward typing is to actually detect that specific antigen found on the membrane of the red blood cells. And so in this test, in this procedure, we are actually using an antibodies which are actually against, no, or which are actually directed against these antigens on the red blood cells. So for example, if you have your red blood cells tested for forward group typing, okay, so the sample here are actually patients' red blood cells, and their agents here are patient sera. So if you have a positive result for the anti-A forward typing, that would actually mean that you have A antigens on your red blood cells. Get that? Because these antibodies are actually specific to the antigens found, to whatever antigens found on the surface of your red blood cells. Now, if you have a positive agglutination or positive result for anti-B, okay, that would actually mean that you have a B antigen, B antigens, on the membrane of your red blood cells. Now, what if you don't have, you have a negative agglutination for anti-A or a negative agglutination for anti-B? Would be that you don't have any, either A, you don't have any antigens, A or B antigens on the surface of your red blood cells. But what if you have a positive, no strong, or four plus agglutination both anti-A and anti-B. That would actually mean that you have both A and B antigens on the surface of your red blood cells. Now, another procedure is this what we call reverse grouping or reverse blood typing. So this detects antibodies in the patient serum by using known red blood cells, the A and the B cells. Now, Having said this, the sample use for this procedure is serum, patient serum, whereas the reagents used are known red blood cells, the A and the B cells. Okay, now supposing, again, the, the antibodies found in the patient's sera would actually mean if you have an antibody, that specific antibody to a particular antigen found in the patient sera, that would actually mean that you don't have that antigen in the red blood cells. Okay. Now, supposing you have a positive reaction, positive agglutination for your A cells, that would mean that you have an antibodies, anti-A, Okay, antibodies to the A antigen in your sera. And so if you have an antibodies to the A antigen in your sera, that would mean you don't have the A antigen in your red blood cells. And so you are typed as B group. Now, if you have B, positive agglutination for B cells or the B reagent, that would mean that you have an antibody to the B antigen, okay? So if you have an anti-B, that would mean that you don't have any B antigen into the surface of your red blood cell membrane. So you are typed as A. So what's the importance of doing um, ABO grouping? So normally, a healthy individual above three to six months of age have naturally occurring antibodies to the ABO antigens that they lack. So take note, you have a naturally occurring antibodies above three to six months. 
In other words, these naturally occurring antibodies, meaning your anti-A, your anti-B, since they are naturally occurring, they should be IgM in nature. And since they only develop, they produce from three to six months of age, you do not routinely perform, okay? You do not routinely perform reverse typing. Reverse typing to patients below this age group, okay? So, again, as a recall, to sum up what I have mentioned, what I've been talking about from the previous slides, if you are type A, if you have a blood group A, if you have inherited a blood group A, the antigens present in your red blood cells are the A antigen. And you should have the antibody, okay? The antibody present in your serum is the are antibodies of the antigen that you lack. So you have anti-B. Now, if you are blood group B, the red blood cell antigens on the RBC membranes are B antigens. And on your serum, you have the anti-A antibody, which you lack in your red blood cell antigens. If you are a, B blood group, you have both A and B antigen on your red blood cell surface membrane and you have no antibody, okay? No antibody because you have both A and B. If you are blood group O, you don't have any A, any antigens. No, you don't have A, you don't have B antigen on your red blood cell surface, membrane surface. And so you have both antibodies to the antigen which you lack. Anti-A, anti-B, and anti-AB. So I'll be discussing what's anti-AB and these other antigens antibody in the next few slides. So individuals normally produce antibodies directed against the A and or B antigens absent from their red blood cells. And these antibodies have been described as naturally occurring because they are produced without any exposure to red blood cells, meaning this is something you are born with. They are called naturally occurring antibodies because they are actually produced even if you are not exposed to any of those antigens of your red blood cells. Okay? So, again, I mentioned, no? this is initiated at birth. Production starts at birth. However, the titers, the concentration are very low for detection until the individual is three to six months of age. So the results of serum ABO testing before three to six months are not considered valid. Okay? Why? Because remember, Although antibody production starts at age, at birth, okay? However, you have generally low titers of these antibodies and detectable levels start at three to six months. So it is logical to perform only forward typing or antigen detection grouping on cord blood of newborn infants. And antibody production peaks between five to 10 years of age and declines later in life. And so elderly people usually have lower levels of anti-A and anti-B. Okay. So the ABO antibodies are predominantly IgM and they activate, complement, and react at room temperature or colder. So remember, your IgM are actually naturally occurring antibodies, okay? So this is something you are born with. And so being in naturally occurring antibodies, they react at room temperature or colder. And remember, your IgM being a pentavalent, meaning it has so much, it has many binding sites, it has 
the, the greatest number of binding sites okay, or valence of all the antibodies. And so they are very effective in activating your complement system. Okay? And you also have smaller quantities of IgG. So predominant immunoglobulin class of antibodies in O individual serum is IgG. So in other words, um, ABO, okay? ABO blood group, when you talk about ABO blood group system, we're actually talking about two types of ABO antibodies, both IgGM or IgG, but predominantly IgM. So we have this, what we call also the anti-A, B antibody, okay? So serum from group O individuals contains not only anti-A and anti-B, but also this what we call anti-A comma B antibody, which this antibody reacts with both A and B cells. So anti-A and B antibody activity originally thought to be just a mixture of anti-A and anti-B, but cannot be separated into a pure specificity when adsorbed with either A or B cells. So for example, if a group O serum is adsorbed, so group O meaning, if you have a group O red blood cell originally, these red blood cells should not contain any antigen, neither A or B nor B antigen. But if you adsorb that group O red blood cell with A or B cells, the antibody eluted will react with both the A and B cells. And so the anti-A comma B antibody is actually not a combination of anti-A and anti-B and is a separate cross-reacting antibody. Thus, it is IgG in nature. So again, where, where do we usually find this? In group O individuals, okay? Group O individuals. So you have three types of antibodies in group O individuals. Anti-A, anti-B, and anti-A comma B antibody. So the reagent anti-A, B can be prepared using blended, no? So you combine, um, you both anti monoclonal anti-A and monoclonal anti-B, sera, or a polyclonal human anti-AB or a blend of, of the three, anti-A, anti-B, and anti-AB. So how do we inherit, no? How do we get, okay, which ABO blood group antigen? So... The theory for the inheritance of the ABO blood groups was first described by Bernstein in 1924. He demonstrated that an individual inherits one ABO gene from each parent and that these two genes determine which ABO antigens are present on the red blood cell membrane. ABO, like most other blood group system, is codominant in expression, co-dominant. So we actually had this lecture in genetics and you know what co-dominant means. So one position or locus on each chromosome 9 is occupied by an A, B, or O gene. So what's important to note here is that ABO blood group system is inherited from chromosome 9. Okay, chromosome 9. So the designations A, group A, and group B refer to phenotypes A, A, B, O, and O, O, denote genotypes. In the case of an O individual, both phenotype and genotypes are the same, and because that individual would have to be homozygous for the O gene, an individual who has the A phenotype can have the genotype AA or AO. Okay, so listen here. Now, supposing, remember, we, you learned from my previous lecture that a phenotype actually represents the trait which you have inherited from your parents. So these are 
the traits which you see or these are the traits being expressed. Whereas the genotypes would actually refer to the genetic makeup, genetic element that you have inherited from your parents. Okay, so when you have an A phenotype, meaning you express A antigens in the surface of your red blood cells, the genotypes or the genes that you have inherited from your parents would be, since remember it's codominant, no? A, A genotype or an A, O genotype. A, A or A, O, both all are capital. If you have a B phenotype expressed on the surface of your red blood cell membranes, the genotypes that you have inherited from your parents would be B, B genotype or B, O genotype. The small letter I here would mean that it's heterozygous, no? meaning B, O, not homozygous. Now, if you have a, B phenotype, okay, you have both A and the B antigens on the surface of your red blood cells. And so the genotype would be A and B, okay? However, if you have an O phenotype, that would mean you did not inherit any, no, there is an absence, no, none, or no A nor B antigens on the surface of your red blood cells. And so your genotype would be homozygous O. So O and O, both capital. So again, to sum, to sum that up, okay, your phenotypes would actually refer to the outward physical manifestations of the genetic element you have inherited from your parents. So it may be A, B, A, B, or O phenotype. Whereas your genotypes would refer to the makeup or the blueprint that you have inherited from your parents. So it would be AA for blood group A or AO. And then for blood group B, BB or BO. And for blood group O, homozygous for O. Okay? So again, to sum that up, Type A, you inherit A, A, mozygous A, or heterozygous A. Or for B group, homozygous B or heterozygous B. And for A, A, B, you inherit both. But again, for AO, since you don't have any antigens on the surface of your red blood cell membrane, that would actually mean that your genotype should be homozygous O. And um, take note of the following frequencies of each phenotype, no? According to race. So group A, okay, phenotype A is common to blacks. Whereas group B is common to orientals. And um, O are actually being the most common, no? You have actually high number for each race. So... <clears throat> the formation of ABH antigens results from the interaction of genes of separate loci. So what are these genes? The ABO genes, the H gene, and lacking you know, the SE genes. So again, you form that blood group system as a product of the interaction of three genes at a separate loci. The A, B, O gene, A, B, O gene, the H gene, and the S, E, capital S, small letter E, genes. These genes do not actually code, code for the production of antigens, but rather produce specific glycosyl transferases that add sugars to a basic precursor substance. The H antigen is actually the precursor structure on which the A and the B antigens are made. 
In other words, for you to have expression of A or B antigens on the surface of your red blood cell, you must have its precursor element, the H antigen. So for A, B individuals, you have H antigen you know, before you can actually make your A and B antigens. I'll be explaining that in detail later. So just take note for now that H antigen or the H gene is necessary for the expression of both the A and the B genes or antigens. And inheritance of the H gene results in the formation of the H antigen. The, again, your AB, ABO antigens are actually located on, on um, a certain loci of what chromosome? Chromosome 9. Whereas your H, okay, your H and SE genes are closely linked and located on chromosome 19. So chromosome A, B, O, gene, okay, genes for expressing that would eventually express A, B, O or A, B antigens are located on chromosome 9, 9, chromosome 9. Whereas chromosome expressing both H, and SE, capital S, small letter E, antigens, okay, are found in chromosome 19. The product of A and the B genes are enzymes that act as specific transferases. And the A and B, G, A and B gene products are enzymes that convert H substance to A and B antigens. Thus, thus it is, okay, the H substance is actually a precursor substance for you to express both A or B antigens. Now, the diagram shows here, okay? The diagram shown here would actually summarize the specific enzymes and the sugar, okay? The sugar that it transfers for you to produce that specific antigen. So for your um, H antigen, okay, the enzyme responsible for the production is your mucosal transferase, which transfers your l fucose to the membrane, thus producing the H antigen. For A antigen, okay, the enzyme would be acetyl-galactosaminyl transferase, whereas the sugar that is transferred to the precursor substance is N-acetyl-D-galactosamine. For B antigen, the enzyme is galactosyl transferase would transfer the immunodominant sugar D-galactose to the precursor substance. Again, what is that precursor substance? The H substance. Okay. So um, the A, B, and H antigens are formed from the same basic precursor mater material, the paraglobocyte or lacto n neotetraosyl ceramide to which the sugars are attached in response to the specific transferase elicited by an inherited gene. So, in other words, these immunodominant sugars, you know, when attached to the paraglobocyte, initially found on the surface of the red blood cell, okay, would actually produce a certain antigen. So, if L-fucose, again, Again, I'd like to put an emphasis on this. So when L-fucose is attached or is transferred by fucosyl transferase to paraglobocyte or lactoemyotetraosyl ceramide initially found on the surface for red blood cell, it would produce an H antigen. When N-acetyl-D-galactosamine is transferred to paraglobocyte or lactoemyotetraosyl ceramide, initially found in the surface of a red blood cell membrane by the enzyme acetyl galactosaminal transferase to produce an A antigen. But when D-galactose is transferred by the D-galactosyl transferase to the paraglobocyte initial substance found in the surface of a red blood cell, you will produce your B antigen. So 
your ABH antigen develops as early as 37th day of fetal life and newborn red blood cells carry about 25 to 50 percent antigenic sites found in adult red blood cell such that the A and the B antigen expression fully developed by two to four years of age and remains constant for life. So again, your H gene, okay, as I have mentioned, transfers a production, the H gene, okay, elicits the production of the enzyme, fucosyl transferase. And this enzyme in turn would transfer your l fucose to the galactose terminal of your type 2 chains, the paraglobocyte chain. Okay, and these sugars being transferred are what we call immunodominant sugars. So these sugars are responsible for the blood group specificity. So for examination purpose, purposes, you need to memorize the enzymes and the sugar for each specific uh, gene and the antigen it produces. So here, here um, is the structure that I have been talking about. Okay. So when um, the H and the SE genes are actually uh, not found no, of the ABO on the not part of the ABO system, however, their inheritance does not influence A and B antigen expression. And so the H gene must be inherited to form the ABO antigens on the red blood cells and the SE gene must be inherited to form the ABO antigens in secretions. So the precursor substance on erythrocytes is referred to as type 2. Okay? So for all, no, you, you actually have this type 2 embedded or found on the surface of your red blood cells. This means that the terminal galactose or degalactose and the precursor substance is attached to the N-acetylglucosamine, no, the H, in beta 1, 4 linkages. So again, your um, L-fucose is the sugar responsible for the H specificity. You have this L-fucose, okay, attached to your type 2 precursor, you would have expression of your H antigen. And the O gene at the ABO glucose does not elicit the production of catalytically active polypeptide being an amor. So therefore, the H substance remains unmodified. O blood group has the highest concentration of the H antigen and that the H substance, okay, containing the l fucose must be formed for the other sugars to be attached in response to an inherited A and B antigen. So here, the sugars, the immunodominant sugar responsible for the expression of either A or B antigen, okay, are basically attached when you have the fucose, no, fucose responsible or the immunodominant sugar for the production of your H antigen attached first. In other words, you do not express, you cannot express either B or A or B antigens if you do not have any. H antigen preformed no, in the surface of your red blood cells. Now, on the figure shown here, notice that you have one H genotype, okay? The precursor structure, precursor, precursor structure or the type 2 structure, and then you should have inherited, okay? Uh, either one of these H H gene, okay, could be a homozygous HH gene or a heterozygous HH gene. Again, remember, the immunodominant sugar for you to inherit the H antigen is actually a fucosyl sugar transferred by the enzyme transferase. You need that enzyme now for the expression of your H antigen, okay? So this enzyme transfers the sugar L-fucose to the oligosaccharide chain on the terminal galactose on um, type 2 chains. Now, for you to form, no? for you to form blood group A, the A antigen, the A gene, no, could be, again, remember the genotype for A, 
is could be homozygous A or heterozygous A gene. So it should code for the production of what enzyme again? N acetyl galactosaminyl transferase, which transfers what immunodominant sugar to the H substance? What immunodominant sugar? The N acetyl D galactosamine sugar, the galnac sugar to the H substance. So the transfers enzyme, transferase enzyme, and acetyl galactosaminyl transferase will transfer galnac or galac acetyl galactosamine okay, to the H substance. No? And this sugar is responsible for the A specificity or expression of blood group A. The A specific immunodominant sugar is linked to type 2 precursor. Okay, type 2 precursor substance that now contains the H substance through the action of the H gene. So if you don't have any of these H gene, you actually could not have any, no possibility for you to express any of these A or B antigens. So you need the H antigen. The H antigen in turn should be initially attached no, to the type 2 precursor molecule. For the individuals who are blood group B, so they inherit a B gene. The B gene could be homozygous or a heterozygous B. It codes for the production of, again, what enzyme? Galactosyl transferase, which attaches what immunodominant sugar to the H substance. Very good. D galactose sugar to the H substance previously placed on type 2 precursor substance through the axon of the H gene. And this sugar is responsible for the sugar, D galactose, is responsible for B specificity or blood group B. Okay, so I hope that is understood. So, as an analogy, so you think of this ABO blood group system on the red blood cell surface as donuts with sprinkles. Okay, so the donut would be your red blood cell and the sprinkles you put on the surface of the donut, the type of the sprinkle you put would actually represent your A or the ABO antigens present on the surface. Okay, again, to note, Type A individuals have A antigens on, your, on the red blood cell surface. Type B individuals have B antigens on their surface. Type AB have both, whereas type O does not have any sprinkles. Much I hate sprinkles. Okay, so ABO phenotypes. So again, uh, A, 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 and A, um, antigen for blood group A, B antigen for blood group B. Both A, B for blood group A, B, and no, no, no antigens for neither A nor B antigens found at the surface of and an O group individual. Okay. So the antigens would actually differ by just one sugar at the antigen terminus. And you know already what these sugars are. So what's common to these? Uh, blood group system is the presence of the H substance and the type 2 precursor. The so type 2 precursor first and then attached to an H substance and then the H substance would actually be attached with a certain sugar depending on the gene that you have inherited from the parents. Okay. So you know that already. So when both, um, both A and B Genes are inherited, so both the B and um, the A enzymes are actually expressed, no? For you to have both the A and the B antigens at the surface of your uh, red blood cells. So, ABH antigens are actually integral parts of the membranes of red blood cells, endothelial cells, platelets, lymphocytes, and epithelial cells. 
So you knew that already. ABH soluble antigens can also be found in all body secretions. Take note, your AB, AB, the H antigens are not actually just limited no, on the surface of your red blood cells. They may be found, they may be found on your body secretions, basically in all body secretions. Their presence is dependent on the ABO genes inherited and on the inheritance of another set of genes called the SE genes. Remember, I have mentioned, for you to express the ABO blood group system, it is actually an interaction of a three of three genes in a certain genetic loci. And what are these three genes? The ABO genes, the H gene, and the SE gene. You know already that the ABO genes would actually determine what specific antigen you will be finding on the surface of your red blood cell. And the H gene is responsible for coding okay, the enzyme that would eventually result to the transfer of a specific immunodominant sugar, thus the production of the H substance or H antigen necessary for A and B antigen expression. Now, your SE gene, on the other hand, is the gene responsible, is our set of genes responsible that regulate, you know, that regulate their formation, the formation of ABH substances or antigens in the secretions. So if you have inherited SE, capital S, Cap small letter E, capital S, small letter E. The capital would mean, the capital letter S there would mean that whatever ABH soluble antigen that you have on the surface of your red blood cell, basically this may be, find, may be found also, can, can find this also, can see this also on your secretions, no? in all body secretions, but people who inherit the recessive SESE gene are termed non-secretors, meaning even if you have A, B, and H antigens on the surface of your red blood cells, but if you have inherited the recessive SESE gene, that would mean that these ABH soluble antigens would not be found in your body fluids. You have to inherit the dominant S, capital S, small letter E, capital S, small letter E, or capital S, small letter E, small letter S, capital A, uh, small letter E, for you to have these antigens, ABH, soluble antigens found on your secretion. So for example, so for example, a group A individual who is a secretor, okay, meaning if a, an individual is group A, type as group A, having blood group A, and is a secretor, meaning it has inherited a dominant SE gene. So capital S, small letter E, capital S, small letter E, or capital S, small letter E, small letter S, small letter E. So, this individual with, who has inherited the secretor SE gene will secrete glycoproteins carrying the A and the H gene. However, the SE gene does not affect the formation of A, B, or H antigens in the red blood cells. So, its presence okay, would actually determine if you are a secretor or not. And being a secretor would actually mean that you can secrete, no? The A, B, and H soluble antigens may be found in all body fluids. Okay? So, to differentiate the two, type 1 chains and type 2 chains, again, I've mentioned, these are actually precursor. 
precursor molecules or precursor chains for which the H substance actually attached to. Okay? So they differ on the linkage and their origin and the genes used for their expression. So this is a table showing a comparison of the ABH antigens on red blood cells with A, B, and H soluble substances. Okay? So um, RBC antigens can be glycolipids, glycoproteins, or glycosphingolipids, and secreted substances are only, okay, are only glycoproteins. They are, RBC antigens are synthesized only on type 2 molecules, whereas secreted substances are primarily synthesized on type 1 precursor chains. Type 2, again, I've mentioned on what linkage, beta 1, 4, and type 1 touch to what linkage, beta 1, 3. And the enzyme produced by the H gene acts on type 2 chains, which are prevalent on the red blood cell membrane. Whereas for secretor, secretor substances, secretor, um, the enzyme produced by the SA gene is the same, no, but acts on type 1, type 1 chain. So the enzymes are the same, however, they just act on different uh, type or type of chain or precursor chains. So again, um, the SA gene, okay, the SA gene would actually determine if you are a secretor or not. As that you are a secretor if you have if you have inherited the dominant SA gene, no, it's shown as here, no, the genotype shown here. Now take note that I have mentioned already that your O, okay, your O have the highest amount or highest level of your uh, H, no? H antigen being expressed on its surface. And then your O would have highest level of your A substance, no? A antigen in secretions. Whereas your B would have high levels of your B antigen in the secretions and AB for both. And again, remember, since H, okay, each substance is necessary for the formation of your A and B antigens, so it has to be present in all ABO blood group, no A, B, A, B, and O blood groups. Okay, so to sum to sum up everything, so this figure shows us the formation of the different uh, ABO antigens, ABH antigens, no, including H antigens. Now. Initially, a precursor structure is, again, I have to review for you to remember. So please excuse me no, if I have to, to repeat every now and then. This is for you to memorize no, easily the concepts that I have been teaching here. So you'll have to get something no, after this lecture. No? Take home learning after this lecture. So again, the precursor structure Okay, precursor structure could be type 1 or type 2. Type 2, for the expression of your um, ABH molecules or antigens on the surface of your red blood cells. But in the secretions, you need what precursor chain? Type 1. Now, for us to express a, the ABO antigens, you need to have the H substance and the H substance is actually expressed, no? Or coding of the H substance or production of the H substance, you need to have that H gene. Could be mosaicos or heterozygous H gene. And this gene codes for the production of the enzyme l fucosyl transferase, which transfers the immunodominant sugar l fucose to the type 2 chain precursor. So we call that now the H structure when the l fucose is attached to the type 2 precursor. Now, your H structure, the H substance now, would actually be the, the basis, no? It's actually needed for you to produce the ABO, for the production of ABO blood group system. Now, 
your A for the production of A antigen. The A, A gene, homozygous A gene or heterozygous A gene codes for the production of the enzyme and acetyl galactosaminyl transferase leading no, or facilitating the transfer of the immunodominant sugar and acetyl galactosamine to the H structure. And when that happens, you produce now the A antigen. Now, the homozygous B gene or the heterozygous B gene codes for the production of the enzyme D galactosyl transferase. Now, this enzyme catalyzes the transfer of the immunodominant sugar D galactose to the H substance or the H structure, producing now the B antigen. And when both, okay, when both A and B antigens or A and B genes are inherited, so this codes for the production of both the N acetyl galactosaminyl transferase and D galactosyl transferases. And so these would actually catalyze transfer of both immunodominant sugars and acetyl galactosamine for A antigen and D galactose for B antigen, thus facilitating attachment of both the A and B antigens on the H structure. Thus, you have inherited both A and the B genes, you have both A and B antigens on the surface of your red blood cells. But take note, there are instances wherein you inherit, okay, you still have that. Okay, there are instances if you have, you have, okay, inherited type 2 precursor chain. But the H gene you have inherited are actually recessive. Okay, now we call that Bombay. Bombay phenotype. Question. Since you have inherited um, inherited an HH recessive gene, would that okay, would that lead to the production of your H substance or H structure? Yes or no? And would it cause production of your A and B antigens. And for Bombay phenotype individuals, what's what specific? Okay, blood group antigen do they type in forward and reverse typing? That I would answer in these succeeding slides. So you have, okay, you have to be awake now when I discuss that. So again, the SE gene is responsible for the secretion of A and B and H substances in all body fluids. No, could be the saliva, tears, urine, and etc. And what specific precursor molecule? Type 1 attached to what? Okay. Type 1 attached to what? Um, what linkage? Okay. Very good. So, aside from the a, a, B, O blood groups. So each actually has a particular subgroups. Okay. So we have this what we call um, subgroups under the A, B, O blood group system. So A, B, O subgroups represent phenotypes that show weaker variable serologic reactivity with the commonly used human polyclonal anti-A, anti-B, and anti-A, B reagents. So, in other words, these subgroups actually express, still express that particular A or B antigen, or neither. But, take note, or either of those, but take note, they show a weak reaction, okay, to the anti-A, the anti-B, or anti-AB reagents. So, weak reaction meaning it would produce um, weak agglutination. Okay? So, we have the A1 subgroup. So, these are actually uh, red blood cells. So, 
uh, red blood cells that reacts with both anti-A, anti-A1. Okay? So, in A subgroups, RBCs from A1 and A2 individuals, so we have two, no, two, A, two, A, two A subgroups, A1 and A2. So, RBCs from A1 and A2 individuals react equally strong with reagent anti-A in ABO forward typing test. Approximately 80% of all group A or AB individuals are A1 or A1B. And 20% are A2 or A2B or weaker subgroups. So again, how do we differentiate A1 from A2? So A1 reacts with both anti-A and anti-A1. Whereas A2 reacts with only anti-A but not to anti-A1. So production of both types of antigen is a result of an inherited gene at the ABO glucose. glucose. And such that, take note, I've mentioned that approximately 80%, 80% of all group A or AB individuals are A1, okay, or A1B. So they have actually have higher number or greater number of antigenic sites. Whereas for A2, okay, since only 20%, 20% are A2 or A2B, okay, so they have lesser number of antigenic sites. So the immunodominant sugar for both A1 and A2 red blood cells is N-acetyl D-galactosamine, meaning this is the immunodominant sugar attached to the H substance or the H precursor. And the reaction of patient's red blood cells are as follows. So again, I've mentioned that your A1 subgroup would actually produce positive agglutination for the anti-A reagent. You should not put 4 plus. No, why? Because remember, your subgroups, A subgroups actually have weaker reactivity to your serologic, um, serologic anti-A, anti-B, or anti-A, comma, B, a sera. So you have weaker agglutination here. So it produces a positive agglutination for anti-A and anti-A1 lectin reagent. Whereas, anti-A2, on the other hand, only reacts with anti-AB, anti-A, sorry, anti-A reagents, but no reaction with anti-A1 lectin reagent. Okay, so your anti-A1 is a naturally occurring IgM cold antibody. And the A2 and A2B individuals produce anti-A1. Mentioned that already, no? But it can cause discrepancies in both um, forward and reverse ABO testing because anti-A1 is naturally occurring. So unlike... Uh, Unlikely, this causes transmission reaction because it usually reacts better or only at temperature well below 37, thus being a naturally occurring antibody. And this is considered clinically significant if it is reactive at 37 degrees centigrade. So how do we differentiate again A1 from A2? A2 do not actually react with anti-A1 anti sera Also, the um, lectin, the lectin seed extracts may be used not to differentiate A1 from A2. So lectin agglutinate human cells with some degree of specificity because it will only agglutinate A1 cells. So the seed of the plant Dolichus biflorus is known as anti-A1 lectin. So this agglutinates A1 or A1B cells, but does not, again, I've mentioned this already, does not agglutinate um, A2 or A2B cells. So group A1 individuals will not possess a great deal of H antigen in the presence of A1 antigen Almost all of the H antigen is converted to A1 antigen by placing the large N-acetyl-D-galactosamine sugar on H substance and may not be available to react 
with the anti-age serum. Okay. So, your anti-age lectin from Ulex Europaeus extract closely parallels the reactions of human anti-age. And again, I've mentioned already that which blood group has the greatest amount of H, H substance or H antigen? I've mentioned this already. Very good, O. Okay, O followed by A2, followed by B, followed by A2B, followed by A1, and followed by A1B. So from the greatest amount of H substance to the least amount, the order would be greatest to the least amount of H substance. Again, the order would be O, followed by A2, followed by B, followed by A2B, followed by A1, and then followed by A1B. Okay? So I hope um, you got that. So, anti-H being a naturally occurring IgM called agglutinin is actually an insin insignificant antibody in terms of transfusion purposes and it has no reactivity at body temperature. However, high titered anti-H may also present a problem in AB screening procedures because the reagent screening cells are groupo. So we also have um, weak A subgroups. No? So generally, uh, weak A sub ABO subgroups are characterized by a decreased number, number one, a decreased number of A antigen, whereas A antigen sites per RBC, thus it's called weak, no weak A subgroups, meaning they react quickly on serologic antiseras, no, because they contain number one, decreased number of A antigen on the sites per red blood cell. And another characteristic of your weak A subgroup would be number two. It has varying degrees of agglutination by human anti-A, B antisera. Another characteristic would be it has increased variability in the detectability of H antigen, resulting in strong reactions with anti-H. And lastly, number four, presence or absence of anti-A1 is characterized by presence or absence of anti-A1 in the serum. Okay, so um, these are the figure here shows that should be noted that there are still some reported A variants that do not fit into any of the weak subgroups that I have described. Okay, so variants may be A3, AN, AX, AM, AY, or AL. So we have also B subgroups, which are very rare and less frequent than A subgroups. And inheritance of B subgroups is similar to that of majority of A subgroups and is considered to be a result of alternate alleles at the B locus. So your weak B subgroups, okay? Um, the criteria used for differentiation of the weak B phenotypes are as follows. Number one, the presence or absence of ABO agglutinins in the serum. Number two, adsorption illusion studies with anti-B. And number three, presence of B substance in the saliva. So the strength and the type of agglutination with anti-B and anti-A, comma B and anti-H, okay, would actually help us determine no, if that Particular blood group has we weak B subgroup. So the anti B lectin from Griffonia sim simplicifolia, okay, or the modified BS1 lectin is prepared for differentiating the group B variants. So for examination purposes, you take note huh, the different sources of the different lectins that I have been mentioning. And then the ability to differentiate through. B antigens from 
um, acquired B like antigens is through the use of your anti B lactin. Because why? Your acquired B like antigens does not agglutinate the modified BS1 lactin. Whereas your true B antigens will cause positive agglutination of your modified BS1 lactin at Dicera. So again, your acquired B phenomenon or, or your acquired B antigen does not agglutinate modified BS1 lactin, whereas your B, the true B antigen, would cause significant agglutination in the um, modified BS1 lectin antisera. Okay? So please take note of that. Now we have this what we call acquired B phenomenon or the acquired B-like antigens. So the conditions associated with the production of the bacterial enzymes can result in the modification of the immunodominant A-group sugar and acetyl D galactosamine into a structure that highly resembles the group B structure sugar or the D galactose. And when that happens, a monoclonal anti B reagents will strongly agglutinate this structure, resulting in false positive B reactions. This will disappear once the clinical condition is resolved. So, in other words, your acquired B phenomenon happens in group A individuals. This is due to the reaction or modification of the immunodominant sugar, group A immunodominant sugar, the n acetyl d galactosamine into a structure which resemble, resembles the immunodominant sugar responsible for group B, um, group B antigen expression. Okay. So, to continue, okay, so we have this what we call, again, I've mentioned this already, Bombay phenotype. And again, if you can recall, in Bombay phenotype individual, you have actually a type 2 precursor chain on the surface of red blood cell. However, you have inherited a recessive, no? recessive H gene. So recessive H gene, that would actually mean that you, know, you do not, you cannot express since you have recessive, no recessive type of H gene, you cannot express um, the, the, the genes necessary for coding or pro producing your enzymes for the production of your H substance. In other words, you do not have the H substance or the H structure on the red blood cell surface of Bombay individuals or Bombay phenotypes. So again, um, this refers to the phenotype that lacks, again, I have to, to repeat that all the time. No, I have to keep on repeating that so that you, it will be easy for you to memorize. So this refers, the Bombay phenotype refers to the phenotype, again, that lacks normal expression of the ABHG antigens. Why? Why lack normal? Why lack A B H antigen? Because you have inherited again the recessive form of the H genotype. Why? What's the role of your H antigen or H gene? Remember, your H genotype is necessary for the production of your H substance, which in turn is necessary for the production of both the A and the B antigens. And so since in Bombay individuals or in Bombay phenotypes, you lack, okay, you lack the H structure due to the inheritance of recessive H genotype or small letter H, small letter H, you could not have a normal expression of your ABH antigens on the surface of your red blood cells. All right. So um, this was... First reported in 1952 in Bombay, India. So thus, it's called Bombay. Okay. And this represents the inheritance of a double dose of a recessive gene. So two small h, no? Recessive gene, HH phenotype. And since you have inherited, again, the recessive H gene, so ABO genes cannot be expressed. So ABH genes cannot be formed. 
So in other words, to answer my question, in typing, in blood typing, okay? So your red blood cells would fail to react with anti-A, anti-B, and anti-AB, and anti-H. Okay? So initially, this would type as O. No, since you do not have reaction of your anti-A and anti-B. But when you use anti-AB, anti-A comma B, and anti-H, still it will not produce any reaction. Whereas for your group O, how to differentiate it from group O? So again, to recall, your group O does not contain any antigens. Okay? Does not contain any antigens. And so it should also have a negative reaction for your anti-A and anti-B, anti-Sira. Your Bombay, since it could not, okay, it does not cause production. In Bombay, since you have inherited the recessive H gene, so you do not have production of your H structure, and so you do not have production of any of these A or B antigens. So it, initially, it would also type as negative. Negative for anti-A and negative for anti-B, anti-Sira. But, so initially the same, huh? the same reaction with group O. But, how will you differentiate it from group O? Okay? So again, if we use more anti-Sira, your group O also would type, would, would type negative for your anti-A, comma B, anti-Sira. Why? It's because this anti-A, comma B, Antisera would also react with A and B antigens which are not present in group O red blood cell. The same goes with your Bombay phenotype since you do not express any A or B antigen due to the absence of the H structure. So how do we differentiate the two? We use the antiseria anti-H. So which one would produce a positive reaction with the anti-H antiseria? Very good. Your group O. Why? Positive for group O, negative reaction for your Bombay phenotype or Bombay individual. Why? Remember, for your group O, you actually have inherited a dominant or homozygous capital homozygous dominant HH or a heterozygous with one dominant H and one recessive H allele. And so you still can have production of the enzymes that will initially code the transfer of l fucose producing the H structure of the H antigen. But in Bombay phenotype, okay, since you have inherited again and again, I have to repeat this, inherited a recessive, okay, recessive H gene or allele, you will not have any production of the H structure or the H substance or the H antigen. And so it would type negative for the anti-H anti-Syria. Okay? So group O, group O, negative for anti-A, anti-B, and anti-AB, positive for anti-H, whereas Bombay phenotype negative for anti-A, anti-B, anti-A, comma B, and anti-H. Okay. So we have this what we call also. Bombay OH individuals. So, as you can see, no, you, you, you just knew before this lecture that we have blood groups A, B, A, B, O, and A, B. But we actually have a lot, no? So, you, you wait, no, when we reach, when we discuss the topic, other blood groups. We actually have so many blood groups other than the um, A, B, O blood groups. More than 30? Okay, if my memory serves me right. So we will have a separate lecture on that. So your Bombay um, OH individuals may inherit ABO genes, but um, normal expression does not occur. So you have inherited ABO genes, you have ABO genes, but this does not cause expression of the A, B, or H antigens. Okay? So in RBC testing, you see Anti A and anti H, the Bombay would the Bombay would phenotype as an O blood group. However, 
the RBCs of our Bombay OH individuals do not react with the anti-H lectin, unlike those of the normal group O individuals. So the same, no? The same with the Bombay uh, phenotype. So Bombay serum contains anti-A, anti-B, and anti-A, B, and N, anti-H, anti-H serum. And Bombay anti-H can often be potent and reacts strongly at 37 degrees centigrade unlike those anti-H in A1 and A1B individuals. IgM antibody, um, your anti-H in Bombay individuals are actually IgM antibody that can bind to complement and cause RBC lysis. So again, what are the anti-sera? Anti-sera, what are the, the um, antibodies, rather, found in the Bombay individual? Antibodies, ha? Anti-A, anti-B, anti-A, comma B, and anti-H. Whereas for O individuals, what are the antibodies? Only the three, no? Anti-A, anti-B, and anti-A, comma B. You do not have anti-H in O individuals. Why? It's because um, you have the H antigen are present on the surface of O individuals. So the HH genotype, this is what I've been telling you, the recessive H genotype does not elicit production of this enzyme. And so the H substance is not expressed on the surface of the red blood cells. And transfusing normal group O to a Bombay individual recipient would cause immediate cellulosis. So it could cause um, Transfusion reaction. Why? Why transfusion, re transfusion reaction? Remember, your group O blood has an H antigen, and your Bombay individuals have an antibodies to the H antigen. And so, since all of your red blood cells contain, all red blood cells of a group O individual no, contain normally an H antigen necessary for the expression of A and B antigens, and so the anti-H in Bombay individual would react to the H antigen found on the surface of the red blood cells of a group O individual, thus causing an immediate transfusion reaction leading to hemolysis or cell lysis. And only blood from another Bombay individual will be compatible and can be transfused. So takes one to know one, you need a Bombay individual to donate blood for a Bombay recipient. So, um, uh, age deficient phenotypes, okay? Those are rare phenotypes in which RBCs are completely devoid of age antigens or have a small amount of H antigen present. And the H deficient, okay, H deficient phenotypes actually have three categories, no? So this includes the Bombay, no? So three categories. So number one, the RBC, H deficient or the non-secretor Bombay phenotype. So this inherits the recessive, okay, recessive H genotype and therefore lacks normal expression of the ABH genes. And being a non-secretor, it should inherit the recessive SE gene. Then we have the RBCH partially deficient. So it has a small amount, okay? Small amount of H antigen, or in other words, the red blood cells of these individuals express weak forms of A and B, which are primarily detected by adsorption and elution studies. And if a person is genetically A or B, the respective enzymes can be detected, but no H enzyme is detectable. Even though it has been shown that there is limited production of H antigen on RBCs, notations um, A, H, B, H, and A, B, H have been used to describe these individuals. So A, H, BH or ABH. To put it simply, class, since you have small amounts, 
or weak expression of age, you can. You can still, you can still produce small amounts of A, B, or H. H, antigens. But gagmay lang. It's because you have deficiency. No gamay naman po di mong H. You need a lot of H to produce a really strongly reacting A, B antigens on specific antiserum. And since they are not secretors, okay, they are non secretors, so they have also inherited the um, a recessive SA gene. Okay, and a third variant or category of your H deficient is particularly a complete H deficiency, however, this time have a secretor status. Okay. So we call these individuals as parabombe. Okay? So parabombe phenotypes are actually rare phenotypes in which the red blood cells are completely devoid of H antigen, so meaning H deficient, or they have small amounts of H antigen present. So if they have small amount of H antigen present, so they express weak forms of A and B antigens and detected by absorption and illusion studies. And if a person is genetically A or B, respective enzymes can be detected, but no H enzyme is detectable. Okay. So um, for examination purposes, you need to remember all of those side notes of information. And of course, the specific phenotypes here um, highlighted in that. Okay, so a weak H-like antibody or anti-IH is reactive at low temperatures and is most always almost always present in the serum of the um, H deficient individuals. So ABO discrepancies. So this is the last portion of my lecture. So ABO discrepancy occurs when unexpected reactions are observed in the forward and reverse grouping. So as med text, no, you need to master. What are these discrepancies for you to correct or resolve no, on your own without referring to your pathologist? So it is essential to acquire information regarding the patient's age, diagnosis and transmission history, the medications and history of pregnancy. So it will actually entail a lot of work no, for you to find out what the discrepancy is. And when a discrepancy is encountered, Results must be recorded, so you need to report this. But interpretation of the ABO blood type must be delayed until the discrepancy is resolved. So this is um, a diagram. Okay? This is a diagram summarizing the ABO discrepancy. Let's just run through this. So supposing you have um, an ABO discrepancy noted when you did a forward and reverse typing, such that, such that, for example, the forward and the reverse typing being used to counter check each other did not match as expected. So, supposing you have a, an A blood group result in forward, and then in um, reverse typing, you had a different, different result, different blood group noted. So, how do we investigate? So, so we wash, no? so we, we, we look at several angles or several factors which may have caused the discrepancy. So uh, maybe, again, I've mentioned you need to review the patient's age, diagnosis, transmission history, medications, and history of pregnancy. So maybe you have collected a wrong specimen and, and identified, um, did a wrong um test that particular patient or, or mislabeled the specimen. So you need to investigate that. So supposing one of the um, steps you do in your investigation is to actually do washing of your red blood cells with saline and repeat the test. And once you repeat the test, if there's no discrepancy noted, so your forward and, forward and um, Reverse typing correctly checks or matches each other. So you can report out your ABO blood group. However, however, 
if you have still noted the same discrepancy, discrepant results from the first test that you have done, okay? So you, you look at other information. So you look at for the patient's age. No, age maybe, remember I mentioned that in elderly, you have low titers or low amounts of your anti um, antibodies, anti A, anti B, anti A, comma B antibodies. Okay, and so maybe it has caused false negative reactions or false um, negative results. You look at also for the diagnosis. Okay, Prob probably your your patient has an auto antibodies or allo antibodies. So medications, medications which might actually cause um, false results for your ABO grouping. And uh, transmission reactions and pregnancy histories, among others. So after looking up the patient's history, okay, so you determine whether the discrepancy is in the red blood cell or the serum results by observing the weakest activity. So for example, if the problem is in the patient's serum, okay, so you have weak reactions or weak agglutination in the reverse grouping, okay. So the probable causes would be maybe a cold reacting allo antibody or an auto antibody or a possibly acquired antibody or rouleau formation. So how do we resolve this? So you do an antibody screen, you, you run auto controls, and you run saline uh, replacements for rouleau. Now supposing the problem is in the red blood cells, okay? of the sample so what you do is um we don't know if the problem is remember in um um in forward grouping or forward typing we use your patient's red blood cells so if the problem is in there meaning you note weak agglutination reactions in the forward grouping maybe the um the patient must have received recent transplantation or transfusion no? or in patients with leukemia or lymphoma or fetal maternal bleed or an A3 subgroup. So how do you resolve this? You do a um, direct antiglobulin test and uh, you run control, control cells, no? control reagents. Now, if both the problem, both problem is in the serum and the red blood cells of the patients, meaning you produce weak reactions in both the forward and the reverse grouping. No weak reactions, no? One plus, one plus, no? Usually a strong reaction is denoted by a four plus, okay? So what does that mean? Maybe you have an autoantibodies or a possibly, possibly acquired antibodies in um, the serum of the patients. How do you resolve this? You wash the patient's cells with saline and do the test again. You also run for direct antiglobulin test and run controls and run antibody screen. Okay, so please take note of uh, this algorithm. This will surely come out in your examinations. So common sources of technical errors are as follows. Okay, so clerical errors, mixing of samples, and among others. So also failure to add reagents. Okay. So failure to follow instructions, uncalibrated centrifuge, and contaminated reagents. So again, as a rule in blood bank, to avoid this failure to add reagents, so what do you do first? You add the patient sample first. Okay? Patient sample first, and then you add the reagents last. For you to really to really remember no, that you haven't added yet the reagents, so you add the reagents last. Okay? So discrepancies are actually classified, no? Classified as to the particular um, particular instances on which they occur. So we have this what we call group one discrepancies, which are common in populations or common populations with the, with group one discrepancies are newborns, elderly patients leukemia or lymphoma patients, patients using immunosuppressive drugs, patients with congenital agamma globulinemia or immunodeficiency diseases, 
or patients who have undergone bone marrow transplantation or patients whose ABO antibodies may have been diluted by plasma transfusion exchange or ABO subgroups. No? Please take note of those, those populations with group 1 discrepancies that will come out in your examination, even in the board examinations. So your group, group 1, okay, the reason for this group 1 discrepancy is that the patient has depressed antibody production or cannot produce the ABO antibodies. Okay? So this is associated with unexpected reactions in the reverse grouping due to the weakly reacting or missing antibodies. So again, group one, there's something wrong with the antibodies. So again, remember, I have to see it again. So these are found in what population? Newborns and elderly patients. Remember, your newborns do not express ABO antibodies not until they are three to six months. Although they have this at birth, but they generally are in low titers that they are not even detectable. Okay, So in patients with leukemia or lymphoma or patients who are immunosuppressed due to immunosuppressive drugs, okay, these patients actually have low titers of antibodies. So also in transplant patients. So how do we resolve this? So rare cause is chimerism. So presence of two cell population in single um, individuals. How do we resolve this? So we enhance the weak or missing reaction in serum by intubating the patient's serum with reagent A1 and B cells at room temperature for 15 to 30 minutes. If there is still no reaction after centrifugation, the serum cell mixtures can be incubated at 4 degrees centigrade. So initially, we incubate this at room temp for 15 to 30 minutes. But still, if there's no reaction, we incubate at 4 degrees centigrade for another 15 to 30 minutes. And we run an auto-control, you know, a control reagent, and an O-cell control is tested concurrently with reverse typing. Okay? So take note of that. Then we have group two discrepancies. So remember, group one discrepancies happens in reverse typing, whereas your group two, due to the antibodies, whereas your group two, okay, group two discrepancies occur in forward grouping or forward typing due to weakly reacting or missing antigens. And um, some causes of group two discrepancies are as follows. So subgroups A or B may be present leukemias, Hodgkin's disease, acquired B phenomenon associated with diseases of the digestive tract. And we usually resolve this by um, pretreated. No? RBCs are pretreated with enzymes and retested with reagent antisera. So how do we do this? So we incubate the test mixture at room temperature. So after pretreating, the red blood cells with enzymes, we incubate it at room temperature for up to 30 minutes. So if still negative, we incubate the test mixture again at 4 degrees centigrade for another 15 to 30 minutes. Then we have group 3 discrepancies. So group 1 in, in reverse due to the weakly reacting antibodies. Group 2 in forward typing due to the weakly reacting uh, antigens. Group 3 discrepancies, on the other hand, are attributed um, happens between forward and reverse grouping attributed to the plasma abnormalities or proteins resulting in RULU formation. So normally, if the, the RULU here, the RULU would actually uh, give a false, no, false, false reaction, false reaction in... Um, your um, typing. So normally, the conditions associated with RULU formation are the ones causing group 3 discrepancies. So these conditions include elevated globulin levels, elevated fibrinogen levels, plasma expanders, and Wharton's jelly. Okay? So those are um, the instances no, or attributing factors causing group 3 discrepancies. And how do we resolve this? 
we wash the corn cell six to eight times with saline and um, washing saline should basically cause dispersion of the Rouleau formation. Okay? So wash the red blood cell several times. No, it says here six to eight times with saline. Or add one to two drops of saline to the test tubes with free cells from Rouleau formation. And saline dilution or saline replacement technique will free the cells, will cause dispersion of the Rouleau of, um, in reverse type. And lastly, okay, lastly we have group four discrepancies. So this occurs between forward and reverse grouping due to the miscellaneous problems with the following causes. What are these causes? Cold reactive autoantibodies. Patient has circulating RBCs of more than one ABU group due to the red blood cell transfusion or marrow transplant. Or another um, causes are unexpected ABO isoagglutinins, unexpected non-ABO allo antibodies, and usually this is resolved um, by incubating the red blood cells at 37 degrees centigrade for a short period of time, then wash it with saline at 37 um, degrees centigrade three times and then retype. If not successful, the patient red blood cells are treated with 0.01 molar solution, dithiotritol to disperse the IgM-related agglutination. So lastly, um, okay, I've mentioned this already, you know, that in the, um, we, the patient serum is um, reacted with reagents, red blood cells, and is warmed to 37 degrees centigrade and, and retested you know, after. And then if still negative, with the we do auto adsorption and um, we auto absorption would actually remove the auto antibodies from the um, serum. So remember your group four group four discrepancies are caused by auto antibodies, allo antibodies, and isoagglutinins. Okay, so that ends my lecture for ABO blood grouping. If you have questions or clarifications, please do not hesitate to email me. I'm online, not 24-7. Thank you very much and have a good day.